Welcome back team. Now your pictures will be the difference between making sale and losing out to one of your competitors. So get this bit right and you can really see your conversion absolutely jump through the roof. Now your product images make the difference between Amazon shoppers purchasing your products or scrolling on by. So let's first look at why product images are so important and then we'll go into a few examples. Firstly, the number of people shopping on, on mobile devices like iPhones is going up every single day and it's absolutely booming. Now you've probably noticed this yourself whilst you're watching TV and you're scrolling through your phone and you buy something just on a whim. Well, you know, this isn't just you and shopping on mobile devices is a very visual experience and many customers just shop using images alone. In fact, in a survey of online shoppers, nearly 61% do the majority of their shopping on their phone. Now that is absolutely mad. So if your photos aren't good, you'll be giving phone shoppers a really bad experience and this means that you'll make less money. Secondly, good photos improve your conversion rate. Just think about this. If you saw these two products, which were exactly the same product, you know, same price and everything side by side, but one of the products had awesome photos with dimensions, how it looks when it's in your house, infographics telling you about how ethically sourced the materials are, and, you know, a close up of the quality of the materials. And the other product is just a photo of the product. Which one are you going to choose? Thirdly, you can use pictures to start brand building and positioning yourself in the market. Think about who your target customers are. If your target customer is a 30 year old woman who are into boho decorations and making macrame table runners, but then if you make really dark pictures of black and red painted rooms, how do you think your target customer is going to react when they see those photos? Probably pretty freaked out and they aren't going to buy anything and you are going to make less money. Now, Amazon, as with everything, has its own rules about what is and isn't allowed. So let's look at what make Amazon's photos awesome and how you can make your photos make you more money. Well, firstly, Amazon lets you have up to nine images and you need to make sure that you're using every single one of these. Now, this is really important because first impressions count loads and if customers see incomplete listings, and this is a massive, massive turn off for them. Now, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> nine photos is loads. Like how many angles do you need of my small products? Well, this is a great question and it all depends on your products, really. Say, for example, you sell wall art and one, what you think one angle might be enough because you just need to see the products on the wall. But if your product is a bit more complicated, you might want to show some different angles or a picture of it working, for example. So what do you do with all of your photos? Well, let's have a look at a few examples here. So let's have a look at a few different candles here. So these are both Burj Mott's glass candles that we've been looking at. They're both, you know, quite similar. They're in glass pots, so they, you know, they're relatively similar products. This one is actually char only charging themselves seven pounds for it. But if you look at their photo, like even though their product does look quite nice and you know, their packaging is quite nice. You know, the candle does look like quite a nice candle. They haven't really made any effort with their pictures here. So if I click into this product, you can see they've just got this one image, which is kind of not that high definition. So you can't really read what's on it. And then it's also not on white background. So it's not really part, like part of Amazon's rules. And they're only charging seven pounds, which is a little bit cheap in, in my opinion. Then if we compare that to this one, so obviously this is a bit of a bigger brand, but you see in this, this first picture, you can see like the packaging and the candle both look really, really nice. It's lit, so um, so it looks really nice and you can see it's all zoomable. And if I go to some, let's, have, let's zoom in some of these pictures. And you know, they start to get their brands on here, which makes these look really premium. And if we go through some of their pictures, you can see they've really thought about who their sort of customer would be, like with the colorings and like having the marble and even the fonts and things like that. But you can see on the pictures, they're starting to talk about what sort of fragrances are in there. Um, and if you have a look at some of these other pictures, they talk about things like the the soy wax, the fact the, the amount of wax that's in there, the fact that it's got essential oils in there, cotton wick, even the burn time. So a picture like this is really good because if someone's just shopping using their pictures, then they can just look at this and without having to go into the description. They know what the product is. So this will really help you with your conversion if you have this sort of information in there. And they've even got this picture here, which talks about the fact that they give some money to a charity with every purchase. So you know loads about this brand just from looking at their pictures and who they're targeting. And this is another Burger Rock handle and they're charging $19.95, so a lot more money and they're making a lot, they're making, charging a lot more. It's only a little bit bigger, I think the other one was 180 and this is another brand. This is actually an Amazon handmade brand, um, Octo, and they've got really nice pictures. And I come to them quite a lot. I think they're they're really good quality brands and pictures on here. But if we, you know, they're not making the most of their listing entirely. But if we look at some of these pictures, 
Like, these are really, really nice pictures. You can you can just imagine yourself like being this person coming home from a day of work and then wanting to relax and unwind by lighting a candle. Here are some ideas for some good photos you can use. First, you've got lifestyle photos. Then you've also got photos of people using your products, for example. You could even show some photos showing what's included in the pack. And a free tip for you here is if you've got nice packaging, which you should do, then include a nice picture of the packaging, because if you've got nice packaging, then you give the product away as a gift. Now you might be thinking that even with all of these images, you don't get quite to nine images. Well, one thing I do is to include infographics. Now, many of the massive Amazon sellers include infographics in their listings, and these show the customers stuff like ingredients or instructions, like or how to install it, or how the product is made, other stuff like this. Now, you can make your handmade product stand out because not many handmade sellers actually are using infographics. But if you remember what I said at the beginning, mobile shoppers use images as one of the main buying influences. Well, if you have infographics, you can really start to sell your products and the benefits of them. You know, I like to use infographics to tell the customers how my products are made, for example, or which materials are used, or how sustainable the materials I used are, or how they're sourced. I also use my infographics to show close-up images so the customers can really see the, the quality and the detail in the products. Now, I know my products are awesome, so if I can get the customers to see that, that quality, how can they not buy the product? Now, you don't need to be an amazing photographer in order to get photos this good. Now, I make most, most of my product photos are taken on iPhone still. I borrow my friends' houses who have got really nice decoration. As you can see, the decoration here is a bit strange. So I borrow my friends' houses who have got nice decoration in their house and I stage pictures there. But, you know, even if you don't have any friends who are stylish, first, you can get some friends. But secondly, as long as you've got high res pictures of your products, then it should be possible to Photoshop your products onto stock images. Now, this is a bit of a secret between you and me, but as long as your products aren't too complicated, it's quite easy to Photoshop your products onto some nice stock images. You know, Shutterstock, Pexels, Unsplash, these are all great websites. And Pexels and Unsplash are even free, so this is even better. And what you can do is get a PNG version of your product picture, like a picture without with a transparent background, and you can place these into the stock images. And a great tool to use is Clipping Magic. And it costs about $3, it's not very expensive. And I made another video, so check that one out here after this one. But you don't have to be very good with Photoshop to do this, but if you want to, you could also get someone off Upwork, for example, or Fiverr. And a good image should cost about 20 or 30 pounds to make. And I've got a link to Upwork and Fiverr in the show notes. But you can get someone to make photos like this who can do it much quicker than you can. Like I, I'm not very good at Photoshop and I don't really want to learn how to be good at it either. So I just get someone to do it for me. Now to make infographics, you could also check out Upwork or Fiverr again. But the absolute best piece of software that I've ever used is Canva. Now honestly, it's mind blowing how good it is. And I can't really believe that it's free to start. I've got another link to that in the show notes as well, but I literally use this all the time to create my lifestyle images. Now in our, one of our future videos, we're going to also be including how to use Canva and Pexels in order to create these really nice pictures. Now lots of high quality of pictures of your products from different angles and from close up will give shoppers a really clear idea about what they're buying. But there are a few other things that you should consider to optimize your Amazon product images. Now I know you're all itching to start taking you know, really, really arty and beautiful photos of your products, but before you do, I need to go on to a bit of a, the boring part of taking photos, but it is really, really important because Amazon, as with everything in the Amazon world, have some rules about your photos, which you have to follow, and especially for your main image. So if you let's have a look at this example here of a good image and a bad image of your main one. So firstly, your main product image has to obey Amazon's rules. So the main one, and this is the one that shows up in the search results page, this photo has to be on a white background. Now what I do is I use clipping magic to make my photo on a clear background. And you should aim for the photo to fill at least 85% of the frame. So try to make your main photo mostly a picture of your photo. And now I've, I cover in another video exactly how to get the pure white background using clipping magic. So check that one out after this. And I've got a link to it here. Now the main image should also be a professional photograph. Now illustrations or mock-ups aren't allowed, so you can't have a computer generated image here. And also the main image shouldn't include any text or logos or watermarks or any really any props really. So you can get away with some props, but just make sure that the prop is relevant to what you're looking at. And it shouldn't be confusing to the customer by showing them something that they aren't getting. So for example, say you're selling like a leather wallet, a handmade leather wallet, you can have your credit cards or your money in there because customers clearly know they're not going to get all that cash that comes with the wallet. 
Now for clothing products, the main image should show the product being worn by a model. Now a good looking model is optional, but if you need one, you know how to get hold of me. There's also some really boring stuff that is very important. So all of your images should be a minimum of 1600 pixels or larger on the longest side. Now the reason for this is so that customers can zoom in on all the pictures. And you've probably seen this when you hover over an image and it zooms in on Amazon. And images must not exceed 10,000 pictures on the longest side, so don't make them too big. You can, you can work out the pixels if you use a tool like Canva or something like that. They can show you the pixel size. Now the types of pic pictures Amazon accepts are JPEGs, TIFFs or GIFs. JPEG is the preferred one and the .gif files don't move like they do on Instagram so unfortunately you can't use any boomerangs. So th thanks for being really boring Jeff Bezos. <laughs> but you'll notice that a lot of Amazon handmade listings don't, ha don't have the white backgrounds and they actually have a coloured background still. Now this is actually against Amazon's terms of service and whilst you probably won't get in trouble yet, at some point Amazon's probably going to catch up with you because they used to let Amazon handmade sellers just have a coloured background to make them stand out but sooner or later, sooner or later Amazon are going to catch up with you on this. So just make sure your pictures are compliant. Keep them on a white background. It's not really worth the risk of incurring Amazon's wrath with this. Now a really good idea for a picture is to demonstrate scale. Now you have to remember that size matters, <laughs> but a common reason for returns is that there's confusion over the product specifications. Even if you state the dimensions clearly on the product description in the bullets, not everyone's going to read this. So just make sure that your product specifications are clear from your images. Like I even sometimes just draw a line on there. You can do this in a variety of ways. You can photograph it next to another product, for example, or you could do it against a person if it's an item of clothing or an accessory or something like that. I also recommend uploading dimensions clearly written on the product image so that there is no confusion. Like I literally make a line on my pictures and say, this product is 25 centimeters. You know, this make, means people make less mistakes. You're not confusing any customers and you're going to get less returns. Sometimes I also show someone holding the product so you can see how big it is. Like if I hold this mug, for example, you can see exactly how big it is. Now one thing you can also do, as I was sort of touched on earlier, is use infographics to demonstrate some of the key benefits. Now infographics are an easy way of highlighting key benefits about products, which potential customers might miss if they don't read the product description or the bullet points carefully. An infographic can be a really, really great way to highlight the key benefits. For example, if your product is vegan friendly or it's very easy to wash, you could put this in your pictures. You could also show some ingredients on there or provide instructions on how to use it. You know, many shoppers on mobile devices shop using the images alone. So use your infographics to really, really sell your products. Now with your lifestyle images, you should show and don't tell. Now lifestyle images are an essential way of showing how your product can be used. It might be very obvious to you that your the insulated tum tumbler can be used for keeping cold stuff cold and hot stuff hot, but not all customers, not all potential customers, will necessarily know this about your products. So in your images, you need to show the Amazon customers the different ways in which your product could be used. Show one person with coffee and another person with iced tea. And if you don't show images like this, you could be missing out on a whole load of potential customers who want to keep their cold drinks cold, whereas yours is only showing keeping hot drinks hot. Now lifestyle images can also help customers to visualise how the products will improve their lives. For example, when a customer is looking to buy a candle, they're not really just looking to buy a candle. You know, there's much bigger motivations at work. Maybe they're looking to make their home more cosy and welcoming for guests, or they might want a candle to help them unwind after a long day at work. You know, lifestyle images can help you tap into these desires and help you connect with these customers. Another good example thing you can do is to show your entire product range. So say, for example, you sell a whole range of products in different sizes or different variations or different colours, then you can show your entire range within your product images. Now this way, you might capture shoppers who are looking for different styles and you can increase the chance of customers buying multiple products from you. Like if your products go in a set, for example, and they look good together, this is a really good chance for you to sell all of your products together. Another thing you can do is show off your packaging. If you've gone to the effort of making really nice packaging, make sure you show it off because great packaging can be really good selling points, particularly for shoppers who are looking for a gift. Now, if you manage to include all these images and styles in your image stack, then you can be sure that you've shown your product, your product accurately and in the best possible light. Now, all of this stuff here is about positioning your brand to stand out from the competition. And in this next video here, you'll learn all about positioning and how you can make an awesome brand look even more awesome. So I hope you enjoyed that video and I'll see you on the next one.